Hello, Kim Collins, my guest uh, today uh, for the Sprint as you come. Um, already a legend, can we say that? <laughs> I'm sure you can say whatever you want. Yes, okay. And still running, still in, uh, we can say you're in the best shape right now, actually, at age 39. I'm sorry, I'm saying it <laughs> loud, but, uh, but that's the truth, actually. You, you ran your personal best at 100 meters uh, last year. Uh, with the nine point ninety six, yes. Yes. Uh, how how do you do it? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's. I don't think the body should get worse at the age at what it loves to do. Mm -hmm. So whether it's track and field, music, golf, I don't think as you get older, you, sh you should get worse because you have to learn as you go. And if you learn your things every year, there's no reason you should be worse. You have to get better. Okay, because you're improving uh, with your speed still. And uh, as we know, or we have the information that speed is, uh, you have it, or you don't have it, or you can develop uh, your speed, but just a little bit, it's like you have a border uh, where the speed is done, we can say. Well, I, I disagree. And I think what it is, it's, it's work. And if you look at some places that dominate in some events, if you research and see how much work those persons put into those events, you realize why they're good at it. Mm -hmm. So when you see gymnastics, you know, training before they can even walk, of course they're gonna be good. Yeah. You know, so it, it's it's just a matter of putting in the work, and you will see the results. Okay, uh, about hundred meters, uh, you were running. You ran first time in two thousand one. That was under ten seconds. Uh, you ran the. 9.97 or 8, if I remember correctly. 98. And 98. Yes. yes, and uh, 2002, 2003, and then you had a few years break from running under 10 seconds. And uh, you were still into the sports, you stayed, you, you didn't finish your career. Uh, why? You were <laughs> so motivated all the time? Uh, no. What was the reason? No, the, the down years, I wanted to quit. and. It was a matter of you lose focus. So I lost a, a lot of focus there and not with understanding what is it I'm trying to do. So after I wanted to quit around 2010 because 2008 didn't make the finals in the 100. Yeah. 2009 I didn't either. Mm -hmm. So then 2010 I was like, you know, maybe it's time to quit. Then of course I did the IWF course to be a track and field coach. Yeah. And then I realized there was a lot of things I was doing wrong in my training. Okay. Well. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> when I was able to know what the coach is supposed to know and teach and how they're supposed to teach athletes, I was able to come back a better student because you're also a teacher and a student. Mm -hmm. So that worked out for me and it's been going better and better ever since. So every time, I, every year I want to quit, something mm -hmm. good happens yeah. and I have to keep going. Okay. Uh, you have any advice about training? Now, for example, for Polish sprinters? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the main things where I see most people go wrong is that they look at the competition and they don't look at themselves. Mm -hmm. They're going to look at a race and see their biggest competitor competing and look at what they're doing right. But they don't look at themselves and see, what am I doing wrong? They try to say, okay, I want to run like so-and-so. But do you look at yourself and see if you're doing it right? Most of them don't do that. So you never know if you get it right or not, but it only tells in the results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but any specific training you would advise? Uh, for example, sp for sprinters, actually, for sprinters. For so uh, what do you think about weights? Uh, what do you think about uh, speed training? What's the most important, uh, what components are, are important actually in sprinting? Well, it has to do with the individual. You have to look at the individual mm -hmm. and see, okay, this is this person and this is their downfall. One of the biggest mistakes with sprinters in the gym is doing half squat. Okay. What from research says that shortens the glute muscle, which is one of the biggest muscles. Mm -hmm. Now what's going to happen, it's going to get tight. Yeah. And as a sprinter, when you're trying to sprint and extend your, your, your muscles, the nearest muscle is going to feel the problem. It could be back up in mm -hmm. your lower back. Are down in your hamstrings. Okay, yeah. So what it is, when you want to squat, you want to go 
put your butt as close to the floor as possible. Mm -hmm. That way you stretch the muscle. Very well. Now, for example, you see a lot of I tell these I tell men you see a lot of guys they want to look sexy in the club. <laughs> yes. So they do a lot of um short mm -hmm. arm curls. So they, they, the muscles are mm, pumping. It, it, it looks bulky, you, but mm -hmm. for sprinting it's not. Don't make sense because the muscles they can't stretch their arms out. Mm -hmm. And when you want to go out and stretch again, because this won't stretch, it's going to tear something else. We all know when they say that the train is mm -hmm. as strong as the weakest link, so is the body with the muscles. So if your quad is strong and your hamstring is not, it's going to pull somewhere. It's going to pull from somewhere. So everything so should be balanced. The, the, you, you have to strengthen the entire body. Mm -hmm. But again, every exercise must be done with a proper stretch. So if you do your arm curls, you must stretch the muscle when doing the arm curls, mm -hmm. coming back up. But if you go like this and you shorten the muscle, there's no way you're going to get that extension while you're sprinting. Hmm. And in terms of the workout itself, you have to be specific. If you're doing starts, you do starts and nothing else. You don't do no 150, no 90 meters after. That's mm -hmm. the Kim Collins way. Okay. <laughs> okay? And Keep if you're doing speed it. work, that's all you do. And then no blocks? No blocks. Mm -hmm. So if you do blocks, that's all we do. Nothing else. Done. Okay. And the idea is to get it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in university, when we do exchange for the four by one, we make, we come, we get it right once and twice and three times. And the coach will say, okay, that's enough. And everybody would complain, say, hey, coach, I mean. I'm not tired even. <laughs> but the point is you get it right once, you get it right twice. Mm -hmm. You get it right a third time. It means you're getting it right. Mm -hmm. What most persons do, you do it more and more and the body begins to get tired. Yeah, and you start to do it improperly. Exactly. So you think you have it wrong, when mm -hmm. actually you do have it right. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a point. Uh, how about white and black athletes? Do you, do you think that uh, it's also a problem why white athletes cannot run that fast as black I, ones? I honestly think they can. But again, they focus more on field events mm -hmm. and distance events. Now, why I think this is, of course, everything in life is contradicting. Yeah. For example, Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, mm -hmm. they're black athletes, yeah. but they're only good in distance. In distance. So why don't we see a Kenyan going under 10 seconds? <laughs> or even yeah. in the, do you see a Kenyan in the men's 100 meters? No, no. No, you don't. No. And neither Ethiopian, Somalia, they're mm -hmm. all black people. So why aren't these black people running the sprints if yeah. there's a black and white thing where sprinting is concerned? <laughs> so, Something to think about. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, um, I was talking uh, two weeks ago with Richard Gilty and he said that it's mental problem, usually. He, he considered it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because we are not that confident as, as you are, actually, from Caribbeans, from uh, United States. You'd be surprised how many athletes are not confident. Most coaches teach the athlete to compete, but not to win. Uh -huh. Okay. It's very important. A lot of athletes and, and they don't the know how to win. They, they can compete. They're not taught how to win. It's a big difference. And confidence can be so many different things. But if the athlete understands how to win, how to compete, it makes the job a lot easier. It's all about being focused. My best races were in positions that I didn't like, being in lane one, lane eight, mm -hmm. being in an awkward position, an awkward time. But you just went out with no fear and, and, and race and compete. Mm -hmm. and everything just falls into place. So we don't want to focus on, for example, as you said, lane one, lane two, oh no, I'm again running on a bad lane, so that, that won't help me with getting a result. No, we, we have to take this off our minds. Well, and in, the, in the case of the 100, 110 hurdles, mm -hmm. it's a straight line. Yeah, so that, yeah. that's no different. You see, so we, we go like this, it's the same distance across, mm -hmm. the same distance ahead, for everybody. Yeah. No one has an advantage. Mm -hmm. And most persons don't understand. They think, well, if I race out, I'm going to get a fast time. No, you won't. <laughs> if you're going to run 10-1 or 10-2, that's what you're going to run. Because that's your potential. Mm -hmm. Most persons need to understand, you got to start at the bottom. You go to some little rundown meet where there's no rolling schedule, whatever. And you pick on some guys you know you can beat. Mm -hmm. And then the next week you come back and you pick on somebody a little bit faster because you see where you're at mm -hmm. and you work your way up the ladder. And wherever you stop, that's where you need to be. Because, I mean, some people think they're going to be 
a world and Olympic champion. Yeah. And they're not doing what it takes to be a champion. Everybody wants to, to run 9-5 now. And they're not saying, what does it take to run that? They're out here not training properly, not warming up properly, mm -hmm. not, don't have proper form and proper technique, and think they're going to run 9-5. I think that's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit <laughs> too much. Too much. If you put in the work, your 9-5 will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the way, how, how it goes, everything, from, from the bottom and with the little steps, right. isn't it? But you, have, you, you a lot of, you'd be surprised how many people think they're going to just sit down watching TV and run 9-5. <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing. especially on the uh, in the internet, you know, in comments and stuff. So right. I mean, <laughs> these get, people are get in the yourself past. to ten one and ten zero before. Yeah, you can think there, because you'd be surprised how many people can drive and want to drive a Mercedes mm -hmm. or Lexus. Yeah, and they they don't even know how to drive even a bumper car at Carnival. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, to each his own. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, it is. Uh, you live in Jamaica, yes? Yes. But you're from St. Kitts and New Nubis. 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 Yes. yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, but you, you have kind of problems with your with your federation over there. And uh, what's what's the problem? They are still like um. against <laughs> you, if I can say uh, you know like what? that. You may think I'm lying, but I honest to God don't know the problem. Mm -hmm. I really don't. And honestly, I think it's. A power trip you know as men we, we like to feel we're the dominant male mm -hmm. but if you, you cannot be the dominant male in sprinting if you're not a sprinter you understand me mm -hmm. you're dominant in the federation or in the, your doctor's office or yes. wherever mm -hmm. but on the track on the track you have no business here but the thing is we're hoping to get it solved you know i went home for the trials and eventually Things make it solved. It may not get solved, but um, so it's, to me, it's really an, an abuse of power. Because mm -hmm. if these guys in the federation want good for the sport, there's no way we can come to the Olympics and the World Championships and don't bring our best and think we're gonna do anything good. So you, best you, you don't you don't cooperate with with yourself. Right? I don't cooperate. Uh, no, <laughs> I I mean maybe they are not like you know they they are not making it easier for you. If um, I can say that. Actually, well, last year, for example. They're not making it easy for anyone. For anyone. Because you were the fastest man in the world uh, last year, uh, indoor. Yes. And, uh, and you're supposed to be here in support and, and compete and run and, and break uh, yes, your barriers. And they have to prove they have the power to do whatever. And they, they did. They did. They did. So... Yeah, but you're here uh, this year <laughs> with with us, yes. sitting here and and running uh, in support. Uh, so, um, how looks like your your day usually in Jamaica? Uh, beautiful Caribbeans, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and everybody uh, think that it's, it's like heaven on earth. Uh, so, you got wife, you get kids, uh, you spend time with them. Mm -hmm. uh, do do they help you with uh, with training too? Or well, your kids will follow uh, <laughs> follow your foot, uh, well, footprints. My, my, my wife is actually my coach. We did the IWF okay. course together. So, typical day we get up in the morning. We head to the track. We try to get there five six o'clock or before, but usually it doesn't happen. Oh seriously, that early? No. Well, usually we would train <laughs> earlier. We would live in the Montego Bay. For okay. Two years. We would get up at four thirty. Yeah. Early, very early. Yeah, it's very early before the sun comes up. So I'm, I'm turning to the other <laughs> side. <that's right. laughs> so we get up, we go to train, we come back, take the kids to school, have breakfast, maybe relax for a few minutes, head out to the gym, come back, relax. But before you know it, it's time to pick the kids up from school, homework, whatever. On some days we incorporate yoga and pilates okay so that's like some yeah. additional stuff yes it's it's how do you feel <laughs> with that I think it's, it's very beneficial because um i'm not flexible mm -hmm. and flexibility which i didn't really like but i see the, the the benefits of being flexible so there's a lot of things i didn't like earlier in my career stretching is one of them and supplements is one of them mm -hmm. and the gym is one of them but when you realize what place they have in track and field, it makes life a lot easier. So each year you learn something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is is you know a newfound youth, and you come back stronger. Cause I, I'm still loving it. 
regardless to what my federation does or what anybody says, I'm still loving it. I know I'm clean and fair and honest, and that is why I'm here for so long. Yeah, that pays off. It does. Yeah. So, uh, and we are happy that we have uh, have you here and and that you're still running. And I wonder how how long will you be running? <laughs> of course, we want to see you as long as we can. But uh, sometimes you're training over twenty years. Yeah. Right now. Yes, my first time representing my country was 1993. 1993. Yes, so that's yes. pretty long so time. So this year would have been, I think, like 11 world championships. Mm -hmm. Straight. Something like that. Something 10 like 11. <laughs> yeah. I lose count. And <laughs> next year would be six Olympics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, missing out that spot in London was the worst. Would have been the first sprinter ever mm -hmm. in five Olympics. And... I think that was very unfair. It's unfair to the sport and unfair to, to track and field and all the fans who, who came out to see a good race. Because mm -hmm. I, I know I would have been in the finals and all the eight men would have gone under 10. And it was one of the best chances for the, the Willie team to get an Olympic medal. Mm -hmm. So I think the country lost out on an Olympic medal that's going to take not 100 years. Not 100 <laughs> years? Oh. I mean, listen, my country don't understand what it takes to be a world champion and an Olympic champion. Again, most people think they're going to just sit down watching TV and, and, and do this. First of all, they're dealing with a lot of countries who put a lot of money into their sports. And whether we want to admit it, there are a lot of people out there cheating. There's a lot of unfairness going on. And if you as a small nation don't at least put the little work that you're supposed to, there's no way you can compete with the big countries with the big money. It's not going to happen. Yeah, always some problems. <laughs> every, every country, all your athletes complain about your federation. Every country on the planet. We all have problems. <laughs> so I'm no different. My problem is just a little bit special. Yeah, and, and you're doing good because you're very fast. So, so, you know, it's easier when, when you're in top 10 in the world, top 3, or, or you're the best in the world. It's easier to get to meet, to get to yes. uh, to earn money right. on sports, and you know when when you're a little bit lower, then conflict between federation, for example, and athletes, it is kind of a problem uh, mm -hmm. when somebody sees uh, everything from from the side, even because we are saying that athletes are complaining, but they are not running fast. So what <laughs> they are complaining about? First, train, run fast, and then you can complain. Then you can have problem, but. If you're the best in the world, you can complain. <laughs> with, well, with apparently, no. you're not supposed to complain. Because yeah. I sound bitter when I complain. Mm -hmm. So, it is what it is. But regardless of what, I will come today, tomorrow, whenever I line up. And I'll make the best of my race. That's what I do. So it doesn't matter who we line up against. You have to make sure you treat every race as an Olympic final. You cannot leave no stones unturned. So you're mentally very strong. <laughs> that's, that's you, very you have to be. You have to be. I mean, especially as a sprinter. And when I tell sprinters, you cannot be a fan of a sport. A fan of a sport. You cannot be a fan. Okay. You understand? Um, you can explain it a little bit. Like... I'm not trying to be disrespectful to nobody, but it is what it is. As mm -hmm. a sprinter, we <laughs> we are like the lions mixed with the cheetah. Mm -hmm. You gotta be strong. You have to be the man. You have to be fast. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come out on the track and saying, "Hey, so you know, can I have a picture? Can I have an autograph? And you're about to waste me? Not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You cannot get me to say that another sprinter is better than me. It won't happen." <laughs> you understand me? It's, yeah. It, what it, what it translates to is, yeah, girl. So I asked you out on a date, and just before dessert, I say, hey, how about your friend Mary? I think she's hot. You think she would go out with me? <laughs> and you're like, wait. You ask me out on a date to ask me about my friend? No. No, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> so even in the interviews, they want to get you to say that the not an athlete is the greatest thing. You don't ask Kim Collins that question. Okay. Remember. Athletes who are racing against Kim Collins in the same race or in the competition. <laughs> no, don't be a fan 
I can be a fan of you and another athlete who is not competing against me. Mm -hmm. But when we're competing against each other, I mean, it's not going to happen. It's, what the, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You mentally, you have told yourself that this person is better than you. Why bother trying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And the brain will tell the body, don't try. Don't try. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, world record on 100 meters uh, is 29.83, but set by a man who was 100 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you still have a lot of time to, to get to be 100 years old, but uh, are you considering like running for <laughs> no. that long or maybe no. to come back? To, to do a huge comeback after 50 years, for example. I don't know. Well, my goal now may never be the next World Championships or the next Olympics. But Kim Collins' personal goal in track and field is to be the first man to go under 10 at 40. Mm -hmm. So next year, this time, I'll be 40. And I will push in for going under 10 at least one time. Okay. And I'll be happy. And then you'll be happy. And then you will be considering, yes, to finish. But or, if or not is doing that, I may come back again at 41. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, you, you, will, you are not considering right now to finish career. Because there is no point. I am considering. But, again... But you love it. You love it. Cause yes, you, uh, you have to. If you, you love, love it. it. Uh, yeah. If you love it, if you can, uh, you know, live from it. That, that's, that's very good and that's the most important thing because a lot of at least are finishing their careers really early because they cannot manage you know when you don't you're not at the level top level then it's no, really difficult there are many levels in track and field mm -hmm. everybody wants to be at the diamond league yeah. no, nobody mm -hmm. wants to be at the area permit meets or something below where it can be a lot better than a stepping stone to get there but everybody just wants to start at the top yeah. it doesn't work like that it doesn't work but if you feel that way, go right ahead. <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Okay, wh what can I wish you? Uh, to stay healthy, to stay injury free, uh, or <laughs> medal finally at the Olympics? Yeah, that would be, that would be something. That is the one thing of all the games and championships I've been to over the last 20 odd years, that's the only one missing. So, getting that, I would have the best collection of medals by any man on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I wish you a uh, medal mm -hmm. at the Olympics, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, we'll see each other in Rio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, all the best. And, really, we are waiting for, for some faster, faster times. Um, about 200 meters. Mm -hmm. You're more focusing on... Um, on speed, not speed injury, endurance, or how it looks like? It works different for different people. Because like okay. some, some at least say, you know, they come off the corner slow and build into it. I try that. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I got to get out and pray to God that nobody catches me. Uh-huh, okay. That's, that, <laughs> that, that, is, it, that is it for me. I mean, there's no... You have a strategy before the race. But when you can, get, can you have a strategy on you, 100 you, you, meters? You can have a strategy, but I'm telling you, when the gun goes off... <laughs> it's impossible to, to manage. Survival kicks in. So there's no strategy when the, way, when the gun goes off sometimes. I mean, you're coming with one, but it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I've tried different things this year and didn't work. I tried that coming out of the block slower and didn't work. Oh yeah, one more thing. You're the fastest man in the world. Uh, at 10 meters from yeah. the blocks, 1.67. Okay. <laughs> and uh, as far as I know, nobody gets even close to this result. Well, most people don't use the blocks to begin with, and they're not taught how to use the block. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. I mean, we were, my wife and I was coaching two young men back home, one Jason Rogers, Les Red Roland, and Jason Rogers, he was getting out the blocks faster than me. Mm hmm because okay. it was easy, he was easy to coach because his body type is so much like mine, it was easy. Okay, so it was yeah. easy to understand him and, and, and coach him. So it can be taught. Yeah, it can be taught. But uh, do you think it can be also like predispositions? 
just uh, like a posture, mostly, or or some power from no, no, no. from legs. I don't have the weights. power like most sprinters. But is it how do you apply that power to the ground? Mm -hmm. It's different because a lot of people much stronger. <coughs> excuse me, but they they wouldn't. They, first of all, again, they don't use the black. Mm -hmm. Even if you watch some videos and if they show you the shoes and the blocks. Look carefully, you will see some person there, they're barely touching the block. When the gun goes off in slow motion, extra slow motion, yes. you see them come back, back and, then and then forward. So as you're going back, I'm coming forward. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, so already cause, cause the, should, I'm already applying really the pressure. Mm -hmm. So when you get ready to come forward, I'm already on the second step. Yeah. But it happens so fast. The, and mm -hmm. there's this dragging of the toe, which don't make no sense. I've seen people hurt themselves really bad doing that. And there's another one where you pause, you have a great reaction, you get out and you pause and then you go. Mm -hmm. So there are little things you have to look at where the athlete is doing and then you correct that. And that's how the athlete gets better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the secret of starting blocks. <laughs> no, no, look, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a training DVD and a book. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. So it's, it's more of a reality mm -hmm. type thing. Okay. So, you know, they have all these reality shows on TV, so I'm doing a reality training DVD where I'm showing you exactly what I'm doing. Nothing added, nothing taken out. Okay. And you see how it works for some people. Yeah, maybe it will help, really, because sometimes it's, really, it's a lot of things. It's simple, yeah? You have to go as fast as you can from the blocks. But there are a lot of different small details which can really improve it or make it worse right but that's where the coach's eye comes in because mm -hmm. a lot of persons ask me about writing a program yeah it doesn't work you can write the program but if the coach is not there to see how you're progressing because sometimes you have a program but you're tired or something is going on where you need to back off mm -hmm. And these are where, where people need to understand. Most persons will say, oh, you need to work harder when you're not feeling well. No, I stay in bed. Because the body is saying, hey, I'm not feeling well. I need to rest. And then you want to push it and wonder why you're broken down. Many athletes train, I say, but it sounds wrong, too hard. What it is, when you keep pounding, pounding, pounding for so many months, now you're going to see a lot of persons breaking down. Mm -hmm. And when you get up to the World Championships, more are going to break down. They're not going to go past that because the body has reached the threshold that you just can't take anymore. Mm -hmm. But they, they think training hard is the same as training in the right way. Not training smart, but training the right way. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. And you have to remember you're a human being. Mm -hmm. yeah, you need Even to... machines break down. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you go to the supermarket and the, the system is not working and <laughs> you have to do things manually and you see how difficult it is. Because it's using like every yes. time, every time, every time and, and suddenly, yeah, there, yes. there is a problem. We can talk like forever. <laughs> I know, but we have a race today. We have a race today. So, yeah, we'll, I think, Look out for the something. book and DVD. Yes, so we're waiting for <laughs> for the DVD and, and I think it will help some people. It's a lot of it. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs>